Rest in peace, mod collection. Rest in peace. Or so, that's what I thought. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Okay, so the mod collection had some serious issues this week. If you came at the time that it normally updated, the site was crashed. Well, that's nothing new. But when you were eventually let in, oh... It's just the same five guitars that were left unsold from last week. So I sat here, refreshed the page for a good 20 minutes and just nothing. So I gave up. And it wasn't until about six hours later when these little devious guys actually updated the thing this week. Mod collection, what, what's going on over there? It's getting really discouraging. So I might have missed some this time, but let's go over these ones that did end up making it here. Starting off with non-reverse Thunderbird bass. So from far away, it almost looks like we have a blue bursted headstock on this thing, which made me excited being called Suit Sparkle which would make me think maybe it's more of a black metallic sparkle rather than blue. But when you get to the headstock, oh, okay, that's why it looked blue from far away. We've got the blue wound strings at the top. Also at the bottom in case you missed that, but whoa. <laughs> We've got a stop bar tailpiece and a three point adjustable tailpiece. Why? So normally these things look like this. It just has the three point bridge or strings secured down here. But in some strange turn of events, they've elongated it. I mean, it might make the strings feel a little bit slinkier, but they must have had bigger plans for this, like to make it an eight string bass and just something didn't <laughs> end up working out. Or perhaps they were trying to make this into a baritone guitar, like extremely extended scale length. Putting your bridge farther back doesn't change anything because the scale is set by the saddles right here. But yet they had to put custom flat wound strings on this that were extra long. And the photos really do no justice for the custom colors. So that was an interesting one to start the week off with. Now we've got uranium yellow. This looks like some sort of laser tag event type thing. You need like a green alien on this. So I didn't even notice it was a lefty, but I blacked out all the hardware and that looks great with this color. It was a full on refinish and featured our Gibson original modified decal. But real talk, 2000 bucks for that was not bad. It was essentially one of these at no premium. Now we've got a Hunter Green 50 standard. Another one of those ones where the photos probably don't do it justice, but you can tell it's a nice dark green color with the nice cream plastics. Unfortunately, the poker chip doesn't quite match the rest of the plastics, but okay, whatever. Going for the camo vibe, I guess. But all right, still the natural back and sides. Next, we had a 335 in vintage burst satin. I mean, it's got a clear pick guard and that's about it, besides a few chromed out parts. Similar story on this classic in honey burst satin. A couple of replaced hardware bits, but everything else is about the same. We had another sparkling burgundy Les Paul Modern VOS. That's right, this thing started life as one of those Les Paul Moderns. It doesn't look like one anymore, it actually looks better. You flip it over to the back and there you go, that is it. But whoa, what's going on there? Okay, maybe I've just never noticed there was a little bit of an additional carve right there. Or has that changed since I've reviewed that model? For some reason it just looks extra pronounced right there. We had a 50 standard with navy stripes. Can't say this one does too much for me, but it looks like the knobs might have blue lettering. Could just be reflecting the blue on the guitar though. The back was left natural. For 339, this thing was pretty cool. Flame top, looks like they put those voodoo style pickups in like we saw on bigger red that we reviewed and demoed here. And we got the black hardware. Looks pretty nice, but the back was left alone. The studio, got the whole copper treatment and mix matched hardware. But I wasn't quite happy with those results, so I went digging through the crazy archive page to see if anything stood out. And I found two fantastic pieces. Another burnt moron metallic. So this thing clearly started life as one of those Captain Kirk Douglas SGs. But instead of having the additional volume control here, they decided to put the bucket head kill switch on it. Awesome. Of course, this thing sold instantaneously. We get this new maroon finish going on here, which probably looks great in person. And the white plastics really set everything off. But if you really zoom in on the pickups, they have the exposed pull piece covers on them. But they're not Dirty Fingers pickups this time. You just have the slug coils exposed for some reason. Wow. Custom buckers they put in there. Custom shop stuff. And it was a full on refinish. So with Captain Kirk Douglas SGs typically selling on the used market between three and 3,500, paying a little bit more for that one, that wasn't a bad price. And now for the out there SG this week, Pied de Paul Prism or something like that. Somebody must really be into fashion at the mod collection because this is a design that you will see. Apparently it's supposed to kind of look like a hen. You know, you got your beak right there, some head feathers. I don't know, I'm not as fashionable as these ladies. But then you come over here and put that on an SG. It just kind of reminds me of like Space Invaders or something cool because you got the rainbow pattern behind it. So it's like, pew, 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 let's go. 
But I love the fact that they gave this a burst because had they just left this big rainbow color thing with chicken heads all over it, I, I probably would have been like, nah, that, that's a bust for me. But the fact that they bursted it, that, that gives it a very cool vibe in my opinion. And I really appreciate the fact that they also did the same on the back. They could have easily just let that be. But I do feel a little bit cheated that they didn't do it on the neck and the back of the headstock and also do the whole burst pattern around that. That would have made that a 100% must buy for me. Maybe they could have went as far as like multicolored inlays or something. But hey, that wasn't too bad for a custom color like that for 25. Then a couple other ones that I think might be new, maybe not. There was another one of these modern double cuts. Looks like they have black pickup toppers on this one with the red rings and then the amber knobs and switch tip. And then I found another one of the orange push pop finish guitars, this time a 70s flying V. Nothing too fantastic about this one, just a 70s flying V in a new finish. So I'll be honest with you guys, I wasn't even going to update us this week because I was so disappointed in the mod collection being late and broken and really only being like one or two really cool pieces. But then the demo shop stepped it up this week to cover the butts of the other people. Now granted, at first glance, there's nothing too eye catching, but when you really dive in here, there are some interesting mishaps and cool anomalies. Starting off here, we have VOS Peach Reef 64 SG standard reissue. It's a custom shop SG standard. It looks good. It's got the vibrola. It's been aged. They're calling it a custom finish. However, I've got a sneaking suspicion it's not a custom finish. I think somebody just sprayed white a little bit too wrong because I know Gibson has had issues with their white finishes in the past where they just don't stay white. This almost looks like the guitar that got sprayed after they were doing like cherry sunburst into white and then this happened. Now, I could easily be wrong with that, but this is actually a pretty attractive SG in my opinion. At the time of recording, it's available at 5,000 bucks, which is a bit pricey, but hey, Peach Reef. They had another similar one done up in Pelham Blue, but this time it had been factory aged. You know, for this one, they should have modified it with tortoiseshell pick guards. That would have looked sweet, though a little bit untraditional for this style of guitar. But check out the Jazz Masters with those things, or even a Jaguar. Those things look great. The 60s standard had a ridiculously nice top. But take a look at this one, done up in Triburst. Now there's actually a little bit of an error here. As far as I'm aware, Triburst on the 60 standard is a dealer exclusive guitar to Guitar Center. I think there's also a shop up in Canada that gets them as well. But this has the perimeter burst, which I don't personally prefer. And it's the biggest reason why I don't like the Triburst finish, because you basically just take a cherry sunburst and add a dark border to it. This one is not a full perimeter burst. It's not quite a true teardrop either. They've got a little bit going on here, but it just transforms the entire look of it and makes it look fantastic. Kind of reminds me more of a three-tone sunburst on the fender side of things, but that extra black border works great. They blacked out all our plastics to enhance the effect even. I don't know how I feel about the zebra in the neck, but hey, it looks nice. They've got the gold screws to really pop everything as well. This was definitely something on a different level. I mean, the back wasn't changed too much, but then you get to the tuners, it's like, nice. Pearl tips, this is a mod I can get behind. And even at a sizable discount, that can't still be there. No, it is. You can get it if you want it. They also had a Custom Shop 63 SG Junior. I mean, 2500 bucks for a Junior might seem expensive, but that's not bad for a newer Gibson one from the Custom Shop. This Lefty Silver Burst had a few unfortunate accidents, so everything looks about the same all the way until you get to the back on this one. A, the demo stamp cracked the finish. Ouch. And then, I... Somebody was being careless back here. Chip the finish off there, and there, and here, and there. Looks like maybe a little bit right here. It's like, what was going on? <laughs> I mean, I get it. This is the demo shop. This is where the factory seconds go. But what happened there? This Les Paul Tribute, while unassuming at first, has an interesting yin-yang pattern going on here. I appreciate that. The back doesn't have too much to talk about, though. But it's offered at 900 bucks. This 335 satin's pretty cool. It must be an older one. Let's see. Yeah, 2019. But it actually has multi-layered binding, black and then cream around it, which gives this thing a whole new look. See, for bigger red, I would have preferred that to be on it. Like this should have been the candidate for that guitar. But it looks like they put the calibrated T-type pickups in this one. So that would actually be a cool 70s inspired piece, though kind of expensive at 2,500. Then I was really shocked to see a big daddy in here. This is an L5 CES. From my recollection and looking through sold listings, this is the first L5 to show up in the demo shop. So in case you're not familiar, this is the king of the arch tops. Like there's super 400s that might get a little bit fancier, but generally speaking, 
The L5 is like that staple, aw oh yeah, guitar in the jazz box world. And I believe I'm correct in saying this, that the L5 is only available as custom order. So that means this ended up here because somebody messed up a custom order and they had to make this guitar twice. I mean, it looks like we had some cosmetic defects here, some forming along the neck. I mean, it's really nothing too egregious, but when you're selling this caliber of an instrument, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But 9,000 bucks. I think if you want to order one of these brand new, I, I bet they're like 12 and a half thousand, but I've never actually priced one out. So there must be a story behind that, but that was interesting to see that was there. I thought this 50 standard gold top was pretty cool. You have mini humbucker rings with Firebird style pickups without the pull pieces. See-through pick guard gives you the extra chrome blingage that you need. Fretboard seriously needs conditioned, but the rest is pretty all right. But now, the coolest one of the entire week as far as the anomalies and mishaps go, an ES-335 in 60s Cherry. If this was a cooler base model, I would buy this right now, but it's just kind of a, eh, it's 335. I mean, it's got some figuring, but it's nothing crazy or special. This is a player's instrument, nothing necessarily collectible. However, it's how they messed this thing up so royally bad that makes me want it. This has not one, but two stamps. <laughs> it's both a mod and a demo. I have no explanation because it wasn't actually modded. So they had to have accidentally stamped it mod and then the employee was like, oh no, that was the wrong one. It was the wrong one, I'm gonna get fired. So then they, they, they put demo on it too because I've seen them mess it up before but I've never seen it have both. So that's something you like buy just as a collection. Hey, this is a mod and demo shop collection type guitar. I just wish it was on a cooler guitar, like just a little bit, like maybe this one. This kind of reminds me of a penguin. You've got a lot of white going on here and the black, you know, penguin vibes, which gives me an idea for a custom order penguin burst. Although I think we've done white burst before. It just kind of looks like silver burst. But anyway, you flip through the rest of this and nothing looks that remarkable at first. It's in the demo shop because you got a couple of finish checks by the neck joint. That's very common for the nitro finish. But then you get here and it's like, what is that? At first, I thought they were trying to show us this. There's like some random crack in the neck there. But no, I think what they're trying to show you is something leached into the finish right here. So it's like all black and smudged. Not that big of a deal, but shows just how hard white finishes are to pull off. Then we also had a Pelham Blue SG base. Changed a couple things up about it, but nothing too spectacular and one of those Access Bengal Burst Customs. Kind of an interesting sandy top. So USA Demo Shop had to pull up the slack for the mod collection this week. But then the European Demo Shop here is all like, hey, I'm gonna pull the slack for both of y'all. They actually updated twice. I think they've added more countries. We've now got the Netherlands, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Belgium, but now there's Portugal, Greece, Ireland, Austria, and Finland. But they updated on Thursday, at a very weird time, 10 hours ago. I'm recording this on Thursday, January 23rd. So that was like 2 a.m. our time. So it's like almost making sense for them because generally it'll be like around 11 a.m. our time, which I always thought it was strange that both of the shops updated at the same time, US and the European ones when we're on completely different time zones, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. And it seems they're modifying more things now. So this one is a 335 dot in graphite metallic. They also put a VOS in there. I mean, it doesn't look that special at first but some of these photos you can really see that really nice sparkly gray finish there was a custom called charcoal metallic all the way back in the 80s and if you can find a really clean one this is what that finish is supposed to look like now this was a memphis made product it looks like you got a little bit of shrinking around the nut but that's another good area to see the sparkle in the finish and sure maybe the binding didn't get scraped quite properly but bam netherlands shop in with the candid shots making it look absolutely gorgeous front and back they also had a 355 figured i mean it looks okay but i wanted to show it to you because it looks like it has a rosewood fretboard must have been made during the whole rich light era and people didn't want a rich light fretboarded guitar so they opted for rosewood instead Yep, guaranteed. They also had another one of these 275s, though I think priced a little higher than normal. And throughout these two updates, they had a whole bunch of stuff, but honestly, most of it wasn't that exciting. It was just player's grade stuff, so you can check them out if you'd like on their website. But we can look through the ones that sold fast, which was this 359 Memphis Limited. So this reminds me of like a, a 339 meets a 355. So it's a shrunken down 335, but with like Les Paul custom like attributes to it. It looks kind of cool. I think we've seen one of these a couple of weeks ago that ended up selling. But interesting serial number, ME for Memphis. 
2014 model, wow. Kicking around for nearly a decade before it finds its home. I thought it was cool to see one of these junior tributes still. I mean, I think these were brand new around this price, but they've started to raise in value because they're just such fantastic guitars. I still like these things. They had an interesting saga. Like when they were first released under Henry J era, they had the output jack on the front, but then they revamped them like six months later, moved it to the side. And I forget which is which, but I believe the side routed ones also have the neck pickup route there, but check out my old reviews and demos. We discovered it then. They had a classic with the satin top. Nothing too crazy here, but hey, it's different. They did a satin top to it. I thought this 175D was quite the price breaker right there. 3,200 for one of those is not bad. And then lastly, an interesting 60 standard in unburst. Kind of a light and airy top with just a whole bunch of flame going around. All right, troglodytes, that's going to do it for the recap this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.